Hey everyone, I'm KRE. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a threshold knob to any of your custom effects in Patcher. So I've got this guitar sound in my mix here. You can hear the guitar here. And I've got a Patcher effect on it. And I want to be able to fine tune the sound using the threshold knob. We're going to go through how to add that in. But first, really quick, in case you don't know what Threshold actually does, it's the idea that certain sound effects are triggered by the peaks of your waveform, so louder sounds trigger it more. So for example, here is a compressor, and I've set the ratio really high, 20 to 1, but you can see nothing in my guitar is getting compressed here. What we do is we turn down the Threshold knob to the point where you can start to see and hear your effect hitting. So already, my Threshold is low enough that the peaks of the audio are getting compressed. We turn it down even further and you can see even the quieter parts of the audio get compressed now. So this is my effect that I've made and it's basically like a, a saturation combined with a multiband compressor. And the idea is to color your sound much like Sound Goodizer or Sausage Fattener or OTT would. But you can hear that, like it sounds nice, but there's not much difference between like off and on all the way, right? 100%. So we're going to add the threshold knob so that even quieter signals coming in can get compressed much more heavily by this big knob. You might be thinking, why not just take a simple knob and route it to something like the threshold knob inside the compressor? Well, my sound depends on Fruity Wave Shaper, which is a pretty powerful effect, but these knobs can't be automated. I can't just create a new control and link it to these points here on the graph and then let that be my threshold knob. Even if I could, even if Fruity Wave Shaper had a threshold knob, what if you have a chain of effects, much like I do here, and you want a single threshold knob for all of them? We are going to start by adding Fruity Parametric EQ. And there's a very specific reason for this. We don't need any of these bands. What we need is this thing right here. So Fruity Parametric EQ2 has up to 15 decibels of gain. We can bring our signal down by 15 decibels as well. So that's all we need is just this gain, up or down, and we're going to make two of these. I'm going to right click, choose Save Preset As, and put one here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting one in the front of my signal chain and one behind. And I'm also going to turn on the parameter input for main level on both of them. Both of them I right click, I choose inputs, parameters, main level. So the main idea of my threshold knob is that when we turn it down, we're actually gonna cheat. And we're gonna use this first EQ to boost our signal louder so that it triggers the sound more. But then at the very end, we'll bring down the sound by the exact same amount that we boosted it. So to the listener, it should sound basically like the same level, but the effects chain is, is being triggered by quieter sounds. So we are going to need a Fruity XYZ. I'm gonna turn on both the X and Y inputs. X is gonna control the pre-signal chain and Y is gonna control the post-signal chain. And I'll do the same for the outputs. I am going to open this up. I'm gonna switch it to output mapping. Turn down my global speed. If you saw my other video, you know that global speed is actually smoothing, and I don't want smoothing on here. I just want it to be pretty instant. Ideally, what we want with a threshold knob at 100%, it's unchanged. We want 100% to be just the, the signal going in, and as we turn it down, we're actually catching quieter and quieter parts of the waveform. The input on Fruity XYZ is on the bottom, so when the threshold knob is untouched, it's actually going to be over here, 100% over here. And I want both of these EQs to sit right in the middle at 100%, unchanged sound. So I'm going to right-click on this point. I'm going to type in value 0.5. I'm going to do the same in Y. Right-click on the point, type in value 0.5. But when I bring my knob down, I want this input EQ to boost the signal. So I'm actually going to bring this up all the way up to 100%. So as my threshold gets turned down, my signal gets turned up. And then the opposite for the output, it can stay like this down at zero. As my signal gets turned up going in, I want it to turn down going out. We're done now in XYZ controller. We can link it up. So here's X, goes to the first one. Here's Y, it goes to the second one. Now we need a knob. Head over to my surface. I'll just duplicate this knob because it's big and beautiful. I'm going to rename it threshold. And I'll just put it over here for now. 
So now I've got the threshold knob here. I'm going to link it up to both the X and the Y on this new XYZ controller. And that's because I want the same single knob to be controlling both this input EQ and the output EQ. Oh, one more thing back on my surface. I'm going to set this knob all the way up to 100% edit and I'm going to set default value. And that just means that when this patch is loaded, it wants to stick at 100% unchanged sound. I will now open up my EQs. I've said this before, but I'm holding Alt when I click on these so that I can open multiple EQs. Now watch as I turn down the threshold knob, watch how the EQs change. You can see that as I bring down the threshold, I'm boosting my input signal and cutting my output signal all the way up to 15 decibels. And then back up to right in the middle. So let's see how it works for the guitar sound. It's working perfectly. There's very little perceptible change in volume, but as I bring it down, more and more of the guitar signal is being distorted. And so this lets me dial in to taste like the perfect amount on this giant knob without having to worry about the signal getting too loud or too quiet. And there it is.